What's up guys, Dakota here, and welcome back to part two of the jail's first overland adventure. So here we are currently at our first little opening here. Um, so we are at Big Bend and we're starting off at the east end of River Road. Um, so right now we're just, we're gonna, we pulled over, we're gonna air down the tires. Uh, that way it's a little bit smoother of a ride. And then uh, kind of see where we go. It's the first time doing it, so I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but we're just gonna head out there and then eventually set up a little uh, little camp spot and I'm just gonna kind of take you guys with us so let's get started So within the first five minutes, we uh, pulled over and climbed up to the top of this uh, little mountain, little hill here, uh, just to get a grasp of how big Big Bend actually is. That would be some All right, guys. So. We've started, and so far this trail is pretty easy. Now, none of it's supposed to be very hard, um, but I'm currently in two-wheel drive, second gear. I got my tires aired down to about 20 psi. If it gets a little rougher, then we might uh, might go down a little bit lower. Um, but so far, it seems pretty pretty easy. Uh, I mean, and granted, we're only in like the first little section, so we still got like, I don't know, 50-ish more miles to go. But man, it is crazy to be, like when you drive out here, you are kind of like in the middle of, in the middle of nowhere, but you really get that sense when you actually get onto one of these trails and you're just surrounded by like, there's no paved roads or anything. Oh, can't see what I'm doing. Um, but it really gives you that feeling of like, hey, you're legit out in the middle of nowhere. It's just rocks and mountains and hills, cactuses, cacti. Uh, but anyways, we're going to continue driving here. And then uh, we'll catch up with you guys in a little bit once we officially pull over for camp. So see you guys then. Alright guys, uh, we just got to Black Gap, um, which if you look here, it says high clearance, 
uh, vehicle required. From what I've seen, it's nothing too intense. Um, so I'm still in two wheel drive high. We'll see you know, if I ever get in a spot where I need to change it out of that. You know, who knows? Maybe this is a little more challenging than I'm thinking, but we'll see. One thing I do want to point out is that we came and did this trip in the middle of February, which is the dry season apparently. So on this particular part of the trail, keep in mind that depending on when you come, it might look a little bit different. We were able to do this in two wheel drive here, but depending on how wet it is, obviously you might need to do it in four wheel drive. While you're out here guys, make sure to be mindful of the cactuses. Uh, for the most part, if they were right off of the trail, they did a pretty good job of declawing them, for lack of a better word. But every now and then you'd run into one, much like this one, that has not been trimmed up. And this section right here is probably the most fun obstacle on the Black Gap. It's about halfway through, just going in between two mountains and going up and over this little step. Nothing too crazy, but just added a little bit of entertainment. forgot what I was gonna say. <laughs> We're here. All right. Um, After a short deviation from our original course. Yeah. Um, all right, guys. We just pulled up to our little campsite, and uh, as you can see, it is there is nobody out here. It is just gorgeous. Um, so one thing that you should know if you do plan on coming out to Big Ben and trying to um, camp is I'm gonna set you guys right there um is that if you want to camp they have a couple different ways you can camp they have like actual 
campsites as well as uh, stuff where you can take your, your vehicles and just kind of hook them up to things if you have RVs. Now, if you're going to do the type of camping that us overlanders in quotation like to do, then they call that wilderness camping. And uh, that is a totally different type of thing where you don't have to book it. You just have to make sure you're off the trail and out of sight. They don't want to see tents up pop up along the trail. Um, so anyways... 10 bucks. Yeah, it was $10. Um, so we're going to go ahead and get camp set up and hang out for the night. And like I said, as you guys can see, there's really just nothing uh, around us. So tomorrow we got another adventure and uh, I'll show you guys the camp set up once it gets all set up and everything. <laughs> All right, guys, we got everything set up at camp here, so I'm just gonna give you guys a little walk around. So we got our little grill set up here where we're gonna be cooking some steaks. And we've got some green beans already in here getting ready to, getting cooked and everything. Our chairs, the Jeeps, and the tent. So nothing too crazy. We'll definitely get the job done. And then inside we got some cots, a light here, and then we got the open canopy up here. So overall, it's gonna be pretty cool. I'm just gonna kind of hang out for the rest of the night. Hopefully the clouds up top will clear up so we can actually see some of the stars and whatnot. But anyways, this is the overview of the campsite. And uh, yeah, guys, I will see you guys tomorrow morning. All right, good morning, guys. We. Uh are leaving our little campsite here um, and we're going to continue going down ugh, pinstripes uh, we're going to continue going down uh, Black Gap now um, I read a lot of reviews on Black Gap and it was kind of kind of interesting to see how some people said it was you know you could do it in two-wheel drive which if you have a, a Jeep Wrangler or something that was that's um, you know, maybe like a Colorado ZR2, Toyota Tacoma, something like that. You could probably, if you really wanted to, you could get it done in two-wheel drive on some of the stuff that, that we've done, like if you really wanted to. But just for the, the ease and, um, and the bit more control you get in low range, I went ahead and put it in, in four low and there was some decent stuff in there, you know, it was definitely to where it wasn't boring. But I will say it looks like it's more challenging if you come from the east um, and going to the west than it does if you come from the west because you're going up as opposed to coming down and coming down is easier because you got gravity um, so that's that but uh, we're gonna continue on here and get to the west side of of the of Big Bend and then we'll probably call it a day just because I got to get back to work on on Tuesday unfortunately um, but yeah, guys, the, the scenery out here is incredible. It is so quiet. Like, there was nothing. Last night when we were camping, you, there was nothing. There was no crickets. You couldn't hear, like, frogs. There was no um, wind rustling all these bushes. There was nothing. It was so quiet. It was so weird um, to hear absolutely nothing. And it was so peaceful, though. Uh, but anyways, guys, we're going to get back out on the trail. And now I'll catch, you guys, catch up with you guys in a bit.
We stopped and looked at some old mine houses, and what was funny about them is that not a single one had a roof. I guess uh, the guys who were building it was like, you know what, this sucks, no one's staying here, we're out. What's up guys? Uh, we just pulled over here at this little spot. As you can see, we got the mountains in the background um, for lunch and uh, probably only got a few more hours on, on the trail before we are off of it. But we got some, uh, some burgers cooking over there. With a good view. So we're just gonna hang out for a little bit and then get back on the trail. And like I said, a couple more hours, we should be, should be done and that'll be time to, to head on back. All right, guys, so we are officially done with the trail. Uh, we parked in front of uh, Pride Rock. Um, so, so I've got my portable air compressor going. We're airing up some of the tires now. If I'm being honest, it's not the best air compressor in the world, but it'll get us up to where we'll air them up a little bit and, and then uh, hop on the road and go to a gas station. But um, so yeah, overall, the Jeeps did great. Um, I think we definitely learned a little bit about what we need and what we might need to take next time um, since this was our first overland trip and it was kind of just random definitely need to make sure that you plan out your trip um, days before or even weeks before depending on what you're doing um, so there's gonna be a couple of things we change next time and um, you know make sure that we check out first now as far as Big Ben goes um, if you do want to want to come out here uh, there's nothing really challenging here. This is more just to kind of get out into this this scenery that you see behind me and just kind of be out in the middle of nowhere because it does give you that feeling. I mean, you're just out in the middle of nowhere and it's super quiet. Um, but uh, Black Gap is definitely something that if you have a, you know, a Wrangler, a ZR2 or a Raptor or something like that with that capability at Tacoma, um, that'll be fun and have a little bit of challenge to it. The rest of this pretty easy um, you can do if you really want to most of this or if not all of this in two-wheel drive um, we were in four low for some of it just to give us that more stable control of the throttle and the braking um, but overall guys it was a super awesome experience I mean I mean just look at the look at the views we got here and um, so we're gonna pack up and so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed the video if you did make sure to give it a like and subscribe and if you do subscribe click the bell notification so you get notified and i will see you guys in the next video take care